So it is true that my presentation will be um, in English, but first I would like to share some uh, words in uh, French since, since uh, I'm in uh, Paris. So avant de commencer ma présentation uh, aujourd'hui, uh, je voudrais uh, remercier l'organisation et aussi Pierre uh, Bodraco qui uh, a décidé de m'inviter pour être ici aujourd'hui uh, pendant un dîner à Madrid, il y a, je crois, peut-être cinq mois déjà, uh, en, sachant, en sachant, lui, que ce soir, euh, je dois être à Barcelone. <rire> Mais bon, c'est un honneur. Euh, je voudrais aussi euh, euh, vous confier, euh, maintenant que personne ne euh, nous écoute, que mon discours euh, d'aujourd'hui représente pour moi une euh, conférence historique où être la risée de notre profession. Mais bon, euh, comme, euh, comme euh, mon beau-père euh, disait, euh, en utilisant une expression très très française. Euh, C'est la vie. C'est la vie. Euh, donc, euh, le spectacle va commencer. So, I'm going to discuss uh, our business model. But first, I want to um, tell you what Pemput is. So, Pemput is an open source, web based, real time collaboration, design, and prototyping platform. We compete directly against uh, tools like Sketch, Figma, or Adobe XD. Adobe XD is now discontinued, but the other two still go. And we ensure that we target both designers and developers. And for the first time, we have an open source design tool that is, that is, a, a, that is a first for collaboration that welcomes developers into the design process. We are not going to discuss that today. We're going to discuss our open source business model. Okay? But if you are interested in the product itself, please go check out pempot.app. So there is always uh, this quest for an open source business model. But is there an open source business model? What, it, what there is is various business models, and we will define what a business model is, that might be under friendlier terms with open source. The same way we have business models that are fine with proprietary software. But there is no such thing as an open source business model. And yet we try to pursue business models that thrive if you are building open source software. I'm sure all the talks today are going to discuss that. But I want to uh, pause here and define for you one of the many definitions, but still a valid one. What is a business model? And a business model is nothing else than a, va and, and a way to capture value through the value that you're creating for your users. So you can define a business model in the sense that you say, I will capture value, sometimes that will be money, sometimes not, uh, through the process of value creation. So I create value for someone and then I ask for something in return. That is how I capture value. The business model should be defined in those terms. And of course, there is always a tension between value creation and value capture. How much value you are creating for the user so that you are allowed to capture value. How much? There's always this tension. And you can see that tension, you think of uh, as a ratio, okay? You are capturing value divided off by uh, the value you are creating. And this is tough. This is tough. But I'll give you an, an example, and a restaurant. You go to a restaurant and you ask for a meal, and you are, uh, there is some value that they created for you. You are in a, in a, in a place, you are, have the service, you have the, the atmosphere, you have the meal in front of you. You have all that, and you have a sense of the value that the restaurant is creating for you during that experience. And then you get the bill. That is where the value capture moment comes. And then you instinctively, we all do this every time, we do this ratio. And if it's fair, we're happy. But if it's unfair, we are not that happy. We don't perhaps are able to express this in words, but you are feeling that tension. And it's funny because if you receive uh, much more value than you are being captured, then you also feel odd, at odds with that. There's that psychological thing then, and then you think, perhaps if this is so cheap, perhaps the value that they created for me was not that big. It's amazing how the brain works here, okay? So it's always like this. Now, software has a bigger tension 
because it's much more difficult to define how you create value. It's something digital. It's fluid. It's not just an experience in a restaurant. So proprietary software has solved this by making it relatively cheap in psychological terms. And typically, what you have here, traditionally, is that proprietary software goes for a 10% ratio here. So if you think you are generating value equal to 1,000 euros, they will ask 10% of that. Does it make sense? Are you following me all? Okay. And the good thing about this is that you can be relatively cheap because digital operates at scale. So even if you're cheap per unit, at scale it works because it's fluid, it's digital. And also we have the subscription models, which perhaps are not asking for the 10%, perhaps they're asking for 1% every month. So after the first year, you actually surpass the traditional 10%. And then it goes on, it goes on. Again, it's psychological trick here. Again, does it make sense? Okay. And this has how, how proprietary software operates. Open source software typically gets 0.1% uh, if it gets anything. Um, because you are building on top of value created, uh, value created from other open source elements and you are giving a lot for free. And it's only a tiny fraction of those users that we are willing to pay for something extra that you can offer. And that tiny fraction is represented also there, that 0.1%. Uh, uh, using open source, uh, you also benefit from digital, uh, operating at, at scale. And then our little trick here is the bottom-up adoption. We, what we do basically is we create so much value, so much value for all, all of us, globally, that even if we have a tiny fraction of value capture, it's still sustainable, okay? Okay, this, by the way, this is the first time I'm giving this talk, so I expect some feedback at, at the end, okay? It won't be the last, but it's the first one. And so what about added value services? Now that you understand when people say added value, you're still, you think, okay, added value as a creation or as a capture, well, both, okay? So that's that. So let's uh, use this, uh, I just made up this thing, uh, capturing value through services and capturing value through product. So if you go to Plus Plus, like you capture value through services and product, you see companies like Salesforce. Everyone knows Salesforce, right? If you don't, uh, you're not so obsessed about the product, but the services are key to you, perhaps you are a UPS, company like that. Uh, Baldur's Gate, anyone uh, knows Baldur's Gate 3? Amazing uh, video game. A video game that is not MMO, will typically go for the product capture value, but no services, unless you are an MMO, and then it's all about services. And then uh, a free tool like Adobe Acrobat Reader uh, will fall into minus minus, okay? If you go to open source, we can also get some examples here. Uh, you have Red Hat, they do a lot of services and a lot of product capture. Uh, you have GitLab, perhaps not so much on the services, more on the product side. Canonical is like kind of the opposite. Uh, less on the product, more on the services. And then we have, of course, the minus minus is a lot, uh, zillions of open source projects. Now, here's the tension that we have at Pempot. We want our most feature complete offer to be fully open source. And if I go back here, the GitLab uh, model here, typically it's what we call open core, but we will uh, look into that. We don't want uh, a basic version of Pempot to be open source and then add advanced features on top of it, and that is a paid feature. We don't want that. We want the best Pempot experience to be fully open source. And we don't want to capture value from services. So that means that we, don't, we cannot go services, so that's entity. And uh, we, don't, we don't go the open core business model because that means that we are capturing value through the product, through the open source product. So are we left with the minus minus where all the zillion open source products are? Still following me here? I'm going fast, but uh, I hope it's, it's okay. So if you look at uh, the bottom right and you get the open core, typically you get the basic experience, it gets advanced, and at some point you get a paywall. It's not clear where, you could, it could be closer to the advanced or closer to the uh, basic. If it's closer to the advanced uh, experience, you get the skinny open core business model. It's very skinny, the, the, you know, the paywall. Um, and if you have a uh, very obvious, you know, if the paywall comes in um, very soon, then you have a thick open core business model. Um, could there be a way where you start with the advanced, the most exciting Pempot experience, and you pay to get a lesser experience? Okay, I see some people chuckling. 
could there be? We hope, we hope for, uh, for that. Because the way we have seen this is that it's not really about the advanced mode or the basic, but about the freedom that you get with the product or how controlled the environment is. Okay? If you do that switch, then it might make sense for the paywall to restrict the lesser fair environment that you have. Okay? Still following me, right? I'm going super fast, but you're a very smart audience, so I think, I think we're fine here. And this is why we call tax the controller, because you get the default uh, lesser fair experience for the advanced user, for the power user, and then if you want to control that, restrict, limit, w however the users are using the product, then uh, you have to pay. And so that is tax the controller. Okay? It is not a very commercial name, I know this. We don't probably, we're not going to, um, uh, this, is, this is between us, so I'm, I'm fine with tax the controller. We will have to find another name, okay? I know that. But who cares? This is the code name. Show me the code. This is our code. So uh, if you go back to the business uh, definition, business uh, model definition, taxi controller is, well, we capture value from the need to govern how people use the product, not from the use itself, but uh, which remains free as a general rule. This is how uh, we define our business model. It's not for everyone. Not, not everyone has to pay. Only, only, only a few people, or perhaps a lot of people, depending on they need to govern a real-time uh, collaboration design prototyping suite, okay? Don't forget what Pempot is. So uh, how we make amends with all this is that we build an amazing open source product and when we separately build the means to limit it, okay? And it's important to stress separately build the means to limit it as an external configuration layer. So if we go back again to the magical quadrant, we have the uh, proprietary product, you have to pay for that. And it's sitting there closely to open core, in a way. And then we have the open source product, which is minus minus, which is fully open source. And then you exec control from one to the other. So now we have a little game here. I'm going to share six capabilities for our product, and you're going to tell us whether they are Pempot or a very silly name, which is Pentax, because it's Pempod Tax in the Controller, okay? So, are you ready for the game? Yeah. Unlimited teams, unlimited users, and unlimited projects. Hey, very good. I knew I had a smart audience here. Next one, Pempod Plugins Whitelist. Very good, because someone is deciding what plugins you can install as a user. Advanced options to share Pempot projects and Pempot libraries across teams. Of course. Of course. If you wanted to limit that, though, that would be Pentax. And a lot of organizations want to limit that. But the default experience gives you a Pempot. Enforcing design systems and design libraries as the only source of truth. OK. Imagine that you were wrong, like everyone's very serious about this. This is just a game. There, there, there are no prizes, only stickers. I do have stickers, so you can go come after that. Access to design code in spec capabilities for developers. Yeah. There are other tools out there that don't believe in this, okay? But uh, Pempot considers developers to be the power user also in a design tool, so of course it has to be Pempot. And finally, a uh, uh, good old you know, familiar uh, Centralized Authentication System, SSO. Exactly. So this is great because this is compatible with some existing models that we are using today, okay? Now, before I go uh, further, how much time do I have? Five minutes. Yeah. It's, uh, it's okay, it's okay, a little bit. You're very, you're concentrated here in the... <laughs> Can I go 10 minutes extra? No, I cannot. So, it is very taxing. Ah. Sorry, no pun intended. It is very uh, tough to go capability per capability and decide whether it's Pempot or, or Pentax. So we uh, came out with three killer questions. If, uh, and we go through the questions for every feature or capability. So kind of zooming out a bit, zooming out a bit. Forget about taxi controller, just zooming out a bit. 
for every feature that we build for PenPod, we ask ourselves these two questions. Will this capability limit the arrival of new users to get to know and use PenPod? If we get a no, no, it actually could encourage, uh, then um, uh, fine. Um, will this capability particularly benefit the advanced user? If we get a no, then we go to the third question. Is this capability relatively trivial to build? Now, I don't have the time to go into why these three questions, but the first one is about uh, welcoming environment. The second one is about the power user being able to do whatever they want. And the third one is having zero conflict of interest with our community, okay? But that's for another talk. But if we have three no's, and please just chuckle a bit with, uh, with me now, we have NO times three, which is of course a ni the ion nitrate uh, formula, chemistry formula. This is, this is fun and all, but we call features that get three no's nitrates. And your nitrates are used for fertilizing, and uh, the, 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 there's the, 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 the the principle that plants use to grow. So this grows the business and grows the community. So it's perfect for us. Again, it's a code name, okay? But whenever we find a nitrate, we find a possibility to have something that is uh, premium for this particular uh, use case. So if you zoom out taxi controller, you get open nitrate model. And you can see here that taxi controller is a subset of this open nitrate model. And of course, this is not a false dichotomy. We don't have open nitrate model or open core. <laughs> that was great. Uh, if you compare it to open core model, there is some overlap. Tiny with Tata controller, very tiny, but still something like SSO. That would be probably the overlap. And then a bit of uh, the open nitrate. So there's, it's not like they're separate, okay? And uh, finally, can an open nitrate model be applied to all commercial open source? Unlikely, unlikely but can it be applied to a tool like PenPod? Definitely yes. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.